welcome to today's show. And I want to welcome Elzette Gerstein all the way from Polakana to today's show. Welcome, Elzette. Thank you for having me, Olga. And for those people that don't regularly travel all the way up to Limpopo, uh, Polakwana is quite a big city, isn't it? Yes, we've grown quite a lot over the years. Um, just to put all the liquor people in the picture, um, what sort of bottle stores can one expect to find in, um, in Limpopo, I mean in, in Polakwana? We've got all of the usuals. Uh, we've got a bar crew, and okay. then we've got liquor cities and, and blue bottles and lots of spas. So, um, yes, all of, all of the usual ones. And a whole lot of uh, small independent bottle stores as well. Your friendly okay. neighborhood people. <laughs> so I wasn't really expecting a, a macro. Is that to service the guys from Zimbabwe, or is, it, is the market big enough in Polokwane? I think the market is big enough in Polokwane. Um, although I know we do service some guys from Zimbabwe as well. Um, yes, but even from, from Zanin and the surrounding surrounding uh, towns. Okay, we've, so we've it's like a hub. About, yeah, we had it about 10 years now that we've had the market. Okay, it's time that I get get up to Polokwane again. The last time I made it as far as Zanin and then <laughs> I turned around. Um, so, if, uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, on my last trip to Zim, I think from Polokwane, there's still um, there's two cities before Bite Bridge, and that's um, Lucina and Louis Trichat, eh? Yes, yes. And so, how far are you from the Zim border? Uh, it's about two hours. Oh, two, okay, so. Two kilometers on the N1. And from Pretoria? From Pretoria, also two hours. Okay, so you, you're you good in the middle there. It's not, I mean, two hours is quite doable. Um, yes. So being being in a market like Polokwana, in a way, it's the, there's advantages because I guess there's not that many distillers around competing, but you're also far away from, I guess, the big markets like Gauteng and, uh, well, mainly Gauteng. Yes, yes. Uh, people in, in Gauteng usually think Polokwane is about five to ten hours away. <laughs> so it's much closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, you're right. And people from Durban think it's even further. Yeah, they think we are in the middle of Mozambique. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so you... Tell us a little bit about that story and how... Uh, yes, we are, as far as I know, the only distillery in Polokwane at this stage. And um, okay. it started about 25 years ago when my father dis discovered his love for hobby distilling. He, he loved making mampur and uh, distilling everything that he could get his hands on and trying different recipes. And at that stage, when we were still younger, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> Why would he just store everything and it would keep him busy for hours? But uh, yes, at this stage I understand exactly why. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> Eventually okay. he decided to, to get his licensing and things in place and that's that's where we started. And I guess that nearly took 25 years to get your license. Yes. <laughs> uh, like what a difficult in, in about 2016, 2017, we got everything in place okay. legally. Okay, and that was even before, I, I want to say, the, the craft gin revolution when everybody and, and every dog started distilling and making gin. Yes, um, I have to say the liquor board here, yeah, well, they were quite surprised to see somebody asking for a distilling license. Yeah. Um, it's not something that they were used to in that time. But it's something that's uh, they're actually used to a lot lately, producing yeah. producer licenses. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. It's become quite uh, prevalent, and there's a lot of licenses I've been to distilleries in um, in Zanin down the road, and I 
think mm. there's a couple of others, new ones in Limpopo as well. So I guess they'll get used to it. But uh, for 25 years is a long time. Um, so I guess your father really knows what he's doing by now, hey? Yes, I, <laughs> I should hope so. Um, <laughs> what I like about the, the distilling game, uh, you, you learn everything new every, every single day. Um, yeah. I've been doing some courses online and I can teach him a couple of things, and but most of them will say, no, I knew that already. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay, so for him it's all self-taught, I guess. It sounds everything like pre-internet days, yeah. And the equipment, yeah. was it all, all, did he design all the equipment himself? The, the first stills were, were self-made by him. Um, and some of them got lost when he moved to Polokwane from Mokopani. And um, then he would rebuild it and start again. And the, the, newest, the, the oldest new one that I've got is a small 20 liter still that he bought. And uh, I'm still using it to this day to, to do some product development and, okay. and things like that. The other ones are a bit more commercial, bigger. And uh, yeah, yeah, the first day we got the 200 liter still, it was like the most amazing thing ever. It was like a kid in a toy store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and when did, when did you join the business? I joined in 2018. Okay. Um, I saw potential with, with one of his products, the shakes, and yes. I told my husband that I want to, I want to get into this because uh, I wanted to get out of the corporate world and, and into this, and I didn't think it would be so much fun. Okay, tell us, uh, tell us about your products that you make. Um, you, you mentioned a shake, what is that? Uh, it's the Majomela shake, it's like a, a, a milkshake that we produce for the the Shabit markets, and uh, it's been doing quite well. It's it's strong. Uh, we've got it in four flavors, and and it's very popular. It's doing actually, it's really doing well. Wow, a shake mm -hmm. that must be a first for South Africa. I haven't seen that here. Um, I, I think I have seen it overseas, uh, at least in the press from overseas from the UK, where uh, I think they were targeting kids with. <laughs> or the youth with uh, kind of a, a, an alcoholic shake and, and there was a bit of an uproar. Um, so, yeah, I certainly haven't heard about an alcoholic shake in South Africa before. Have you? No, no. I'm, I, I've, I've tried looking for a similar product, but I think we, we do have a first in South Africa. Okay. So, in what flavors do you make those? It's a strawberry and a musk. Uh, vanilla and bubble gum. Okay. And the packaging? Uh, 350 ml uh, plastic bottles. Okay. With, um, yeah, and, and it's 14% alcohol. Okay. And is that targeted at the lower end of the market? Would you? Yes. It's, I haven't it's, seen the packaging, but uh, the pictures look quite nice. Doesn't I'll you? send you some. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, I mean, at your bigger customers, what sort of volumes do you get out of them? Do they order it by cases or by, by pallets? Uh, we, they order by cases. Okay. Our biggest clients usually order 100 cases at a, at a okay. time. Okay. And, yeah. and does it have to be refrigerated? I mean, dairy product sounds like it's got a short shelf life. Yeah, uh, it keeps up to two months. Um, okay. We've successfully kept it out of the, the refrigerator for about two months, and then refrigerated, it keeps longer, but usually it sells before then. So the sell by date is, is usually two months. Okay, and do you use preservatives, or how do you how do you make Yes, yes, we, we do add some preservatives to, to keep it longer. Otherwise, it keeps about a month, okay. and uh, just to extend the shelf life a bit. Yeah, and I guess the alcohol is also a bit of a preservative. It helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, so do you think you could get a, get that into the formal market, or is uh, is uh, the packaging not suited to that? I changed the packaging to to um, suit the the formal market. Okay. That was the idea when we changed the packaging. We made it a bit bigger, uh, got the barcoding right displays the A number, the, all, of, all of the legal stuff. 
So um, I think it's ready for the for the retail market. Okay. Well, that sounds exciting. So, have you, have you got any? Uh, is the distribution purely in Polokwane, or have you got some outside uh, distributors? I've got a new distributor in Bloemfontein. Okay. Um, yeah, it's actually a deal that we made yesterday, so <laughs> it's a brand new, brand new okay. deal, um, and that's the things that we've delivered so far. Um, up to to yesterday, it's only been Polokwane and Savans. Okay. And uh, so, would you be looking for distribute distribution partners in in Gauteng? I guess would be the first stop. Yes, yes, I would love to okay. to distribute it to that side. Okay, so tell me your your creativity. If I look at your your gin bottle, it looks very. I mean, I think it's 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 quite very pretty. I must say. <laughs> Are you the designer, or is it? Have you got an agency? Um, oh, that's a, another story. <laughs> okay. my, my my husband's daughter, um, she was studying at Pochipstrum um, when the gin started going because the gin I started distilling for myself, and um, it, word of mouth it just started to grow. And it was in ugly plastic bottles, and. Let's rebrand, and we were struggling with the logo and the name. And then she phoned me and said, "No, listen, I've got an idea." And she sent me this, and we just ran with it because it's <laughs> so different. It's different, and it's colourful, and um, because the, the market is flooded with yeah. with gems and and with very good gems. So yeah. for my gem to stand out, I had to do something different. Okay, so and explain to us what you did. Beside, first of all, the name is quite. Naughty, I thought. <laughs> I love it. You can play with it so much. Uh, the name is Flocking Fabulous. And uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of swearing, you can um, you can, <laughs> can just say just, <laughs> just flock off. <laughs> so yeah, I love the name. You can play with it a lot. Um, and also and very colorful. It's very colourful. I, I like the colours, especially if you add your tonic. Usually, most of the gins lose their colour. Um, I decided to to just have it pop uh, when you're drinking it, before you're drinking it, and also we add a bit of glitter um, okay. to to make it stand out. Wonderful. Um, and and the flavours. It looks like you've got five different ones. Yes, uh, we've got a the normal original gin that that's the base for all of the the other gins. They all get made exactly the same. Then we've got a, a berry, um, and we've got a, a watermelon. That's our newest flavour. We've got a pink sweets. That is my dad's favourite. He chose, uh, <laughs> he chose the, the pink one. <laughs> he loves the musk and he does very well with the men. And uh, then we have a lychee as well. Okay. So that is, the lychee, is the lychee flavoured or is it made from lychees? It's made from lychees. I try to, to do it as natural as possible. Okay. Um, but when it comes to the, the, the colour and of course the glitter, I'm not, I'm not actually allowed to add the glitter. So yeah. we were thinking about putting little sachets that's on the bottle. But okay. um, yes, to, it, we try to do it as natural as possible. Okay. So you use natural sweets? <laughs> <laughs> the sweets is absolutely artificial. <laughs> but uh, still sugar free. <laughs> yeah, and I tried, I tried to, to, to change that flavor. But you know, um, when you get to a certain age, <laughs> The, 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 if you've got an idea, you have an idea. So, so we had to stick to that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, what else do you do at the distillery? You talk about uh, um, Mampur and all that. Is that purely for own consumption or is it uh, uh, the hobby part or is it also commercial? It is a hobby. Um, I like, especially when we, we get certain fruits, certain times of the year, I, I, I like to make a batch of mampur. And we, I've got this tiny little shop in the industrial areas where I put some of them in the shop for sale. So we don't have uh, the same flavors or the, the same mampur right through the year. Okay. Because I do it on a very small scale. 
and that's just to to keep me busy if, if the orders are not huge coming in so <laughs> just keep yeah busy. that's the sort of thing that i think the tourist market would appreciate it you know if you do small batch stuff it's it's quite um it's i think it's quite appealing for for tourists um once they get back into the country i guess yes and i was quite surprised the locals um, enjoy the mokoi as well. Okay. Um, usually when I put it in, uh, the guys, especially the shipins, if they come to buy them, buy all of the mokoi as soon as there's enough stock in the shop. So oh. um, that's that's actually something that I was surprised uh, about. Usually uh, if somebody orders before and I don't put it in the shop, otherwise it, the stock won't be there when they get there. So um, people yeah. still love mokoi. They still love the traditional drinks that we have. Yeah. So in, in, in a place, place like Polokwane, I, I guess um, that uh, there's quite a big, obviously, beer culture, but brandy and coke. Is there also, has gin mm -hmm. also taken off there? I have to say we have a lot of ladies enjoying their gins. Um, I think it's a countrywide thing, yeah. and, and it's not only white or black or, or, or colored girls, Everybody loves gin, yeah. and I am surprised that that men also enjoy gin. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of men that says no, I actually like this one and I like that, and I'm I'm always surprised. But the guys drink like the pink sweets with coke, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> whatever tickles. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the <laughs> <suck> is. <laughs> no, that's yeah. so funny. I've got people drinking the watermelon with. Uh, flavored water and some of them with iced tea and and so I said no gin you can drink with anything as yeah. <laughs> that's good <laughs> you're drinking alcohol um <laughs> <laughs> yeah and okay and then you mentioned something about uh, um contract distilling you also do uh, pro projects with other brand owners yes um that's a thing I've been asked about since uh, we started, uh, when I started to do some advertising and not even on the distillery, I advertise my brands, not the distillery. Mm. I've had many people contacting me and then with the lockdown, I decided, okay, for extra income, I'm not doing this. And I have to say, it's something I enjoy a lot, uh, doing brand development with somebody and, and starting to, to make it. And I haven't had a lot of clients, but the clients that I do have are very happy and doing actually quite well. Okay. So, um, and, and uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm not doing like big projects yet, but the smaller ones and, and I'm loving it. It's, it's nice to help somebody realize their own dream. Yeah, and is that, is that with local products or is it just standard gins or, or what products are your, are your clients wanting? At this stage, it's uh, vodka and okay. gins that they've asked for. Okay. Interesting. And well, where can where can people find you? On they online. Can, uh, they can find me on Facebook. Um, yeah. The at Flocking Fabulous Gin, the gins of course, yeah. and then Majamela Shakes as well. And we are on Instagram also on the Flocking Fabulous. Okay. And uh, yes, our website will be running one of these days. We're busy with that, and that will be under majamela.com. Okay, so you've got that domain. Tell us what that means, Majamela. <laughs> <laughs> or where the That's name comes from. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's um, when he used to work in construction many years ago. It's a nickname the Sutu people gave him. Okay. And um, yeah, in different areas of the country, it means something different. But I know where they gave him the name, it means man who walks fast because okay. he can across the site <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, yeah that's that's a very interesting um, story and thank you for for joining us today we must get some nice pictures of you and your products and even some samples and if people are looking for an interesting and a unique new product um, there we have it Majamela Shake and I'm sure you can also help with, like you said, with the product development of other stuff. Um, Alzette, thanks very much for joining us today and 
I really hope that we can help you find some distributors in Gauteng and other parts of the, the country. Thank you so much for having me, Olga. I do appreciate it.